Okay, so we're going to do cycles uh, short and sweet, just like I said, more like a review. So this one, hopefully you've realized this is the carbon cycle here. Okay, so carbon cycle is sometimes called the carbon-oxygen cycle because, like we mentioned, the two usually go hand in hand. If something releases carbon, it usually takes in oxygen. If it takes in oxygen, it usually releases carbon. So let's look at some of the things here that can release carbon. So that's what we're going to focus right now on things that can release carbon. So those would be things like uh, cellular respiration. And hopefully we remember what cellular respiration is. Right, it's the formation of the ATP, that usable energy. It requires glucose and carbon, uh, and it, I'm sorry, it requires glucose and oxygen. It releases carbon. It releases water. So um, organisms do cellular respiration. Um, you can see the plant does cellular respiration as well. Animals do cellular respiration. So that releases carbon back into the atmosphere. Okay, um, decomposition will release carbon back into the atmosphere. So when organisms die and they are broken down, okay, so they're decaying and they're broken down, that's releasing carbon back into the atmosphere, as well as combustion. Okay, remember, combustion is any kind of, basically any kind of fire, okay, burning of things. So burning of the fossil fuels, um, cars in the when cars are burning gas, um, fires in general, okay, all of these things release carbon into the atmosphere. Okay? Uh, then we also have um, erosion. Okay, remember, erosion is just our weathering, wearing away of the rock. Okay? That also releases carbon into the atmosphere. Remember, the only thing that does not release carbon into the atmosphere that actually removes it from the atmosphere is photosynthesis. Okay? So photosynthesis is going to be our only thing that removes CO2 from the atmosphere. All of these things over here add CO2 to the atmosphere. And so you can see here as it's cycling through, okay, we've got our atmospheric carbon dioxide pulled out through photosynthesis. Okay, and then as the organisms do respiration, as they die and decay, as the fossil fuels are burned, as the erosion, all of that is returning the CO2 back to the atmosphere. So increasing the carbon levels in the atmosphere. Okay, so this is just a little um, graph to show you um, a little bit of um, evidence for global warming. Okay, you can see as the temperature is rising, so I've got temperature over here on the side. As the temperature is rising, um, the thought process again is that is due to an increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that um, helps retain the heat in the atmosphere, and so that is leading to these increase in temperatures. And remember, since photosynthesis is the only thing that pulls the carbon dioxide into the cycle, pulling it out of the atmosphere, um, then it's very important that we are paying attention to deforestation and plant removal to try to stop that. So switching over to our nitrogen cycle, uh, remember these are the reasons why we need nitrogen. Remember our nucleic acids our DNA and our RNA that are made of nucleotides that have those nitrogen bases. So all organisms have DNA, they have RNA, okay, as well as the proteins. Okay, remember, proteins are made of amino acids. That's the monomer of proteins are amino acids. They have that repeating NCC pattern. In, um, a lot of proteins act as enzymes, so they control chemical reactions. So proteins are extremely important, to, again, to all organisms. Bacteria need uh, do chemical reactions. Plants, protists, fungus, they all do chemical reactions. So nitrogen is very important to organisms. So let's see how we get it in, out of the atmosphere and into the organism. So this is the diagram that most of you guys saw in class. Okay, um, so we just put it back up here again so you can pause and you know, fill anything in that you need. As we walk through this, I'm actually going to switch to a different diagram because this is not necessarily exactly what you're going to see on your STAR test. So the more diagrams you can be exposed to, the better. So, on, um, so we're going to use this diagram to run through. So remember, we have the free nitrogen in the atmosphere here. 
Okay, and so that free nitrogen atmosphere, remember that's a non-usable form. So we have to do the first step here, which is the nitrogen fixation. So remember nitrogen fixation is done by nitrogen fixing bacteria. Remember you can find those on the root nodules of things like legumes. Okay, um, you can also find them free in the soil. And remember lightning, you like my little lightning bolt there, lightning can also do nitrogen fixation. Okay, so nitrogen fixation, we're converting that free nitrogen, okay, so converting that into, into the ammonia. Okay, so there's our nitrogen fixation happening there, done by the nitrogen fixing bacteria that are found on the root nodules in the soil that um, lightning can also help contribute to this. Okay, so again, remember, ammonia is still not the usable form of nitrogen that we need yet. So the next step then is to take that ammonia and convert it into nitrites and nitrates. And so that process here, okay, the conversion of the ammonia into the nitrites and the nitrates, remember that's nitrification, and that's done by our nitrifying bacteria. Okay, and so they're going to convert it into the usable form. So remember, nitrates finally are the usable form. And so the organisms in the, um, the plants are going to take that nitrogen, that usable form of nitrogen, and they are going to assimilate it. And remember, this is our assimilation when the plant is the uptake of that nitrogen into the plant roots. Okay, and so now the plant has nitrogen to be able to make its enzyme proteins, to be able to repair its DNA, make some RNA, and then now the animals can get nitrogen from eating the plants or the animals that eat the um, animals that ate the plants. But we've got nitrogen now, usable nitrogen into the food chain now. Okay, and so you that nitrogen will get recycled through the soil through decomposition. Okay, the plants will the plants the animals they will die and go through decomposition. And when those organisms die and get broken down, that those um, waste products is going to be converted into ammonia. So now we're back here at ammonia. And so the nitrifying bacteria can do nitrification and convert that ammonia into the nitrates and the nitrites. And so we're cycling here through the soil, but the only thing we haven't done is at some point it does need to, some of that nitrogen will need to return to the atmosphere. Okay? And so all of those nitrates and ammonia that are produced do not necessarily get, um, does not all get assimilated into the plant. Okay? Some of it will go through a process called denitrification. Okay? And so denitrification will be when that plant is, I'm sorry, it will be when those nitrates are ammonia here. So there's our denitrification okay, on this side here. So the denitrifying bacteria will take those nitrates, those nitrites, and they will convert it back into atmospheric nitrogen. Okay, they'll cleave off those oxygens and convert it back into atmospheric nitrogen. And so it will complete the cycle there. And so again, that process is called denitrification and it's done by the denitrifying bacteria. It's important that if that nitrogen is for us, we need to um, keep in mind that too much nitrogen can actually be a problem. So let's talk about this in relationship to farming. Okay, so on farms, when they have large quantities of crops here, that's going to, um, so when there's a lot of the crop, Okay, that can actually, that's going to decrease the nitrogen that's available in the soil. So farmers will rotate their fields uh, with legumes. And those are the plants, those are the particular plants that have those root nodules that will have the nitrogen fixing bacteria in them. So they will rotate their fields every other year and they will put in legumes to help replace that nitrogen. Okay, sometimes they will also add fertilizers. And fertilizers can actually be a major problem for the surrounding environment. Okay, too much fertilizer just gets washed off into the water supply. You can see this is a result of fertilizer runoff, both of these, as well as the problems down here 
are results of fertilizer, um, fertilizer runoff and fertilized, fertilizer damage. So essentially what happens is this process called eutrophication. And so with eutrophication, there's an increase in nitrogen in the water. Okay? And what that does is that causes an increase in bacteria and algae growth. And as the bacteria and the algae grow, they can do a couple of things. Okay? They can decrease the oxygen supply because they're using up all the oxygen. So they can decrease the oxygen supply for the other organisms. That's what we see happening over here. Okay? We have this eutrophication happening. There's too much nitrogen, so there's an increase in bacterial and algae, algae growth because they're excited that there's all this nitrogen, and that depletes the oxygen for the other organisms. The other thing that this increase in algae and bacteria can do, you can see it happening up there on the top slide, is that this top picture here is that they block the light. There's so much growth on the surface of the water that they're blocking the light from reaching the aquatic plants. Well, as you know, the plants are the basis of the food chain. So if the plants aren't growing, the rest of the organisms are not going to have a food supply. So as important as nitrogen is to organisms, there is also a fine balance, too. There can be too much of it.